Welcome back to the Data Professor YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Chenen Nanta Salamat, and I'm an Associate Professor of Bioinformatics. On this YouTube channel, we cover about data science concepts and practical tutorials. So if you're into this kind of content, please consider subscribing. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to answer or attempt to answer the million dollar question, which is, which programming language should you learn for data science? Should it be R or should it be Python? So both R and Python are the most popular languages for data science. I'm sure there are several other languages that could also be candidates such as Julia or Scala. But in this video, we're going to focus on R and Python, which are the most popular question being asked in Facebook fan page or group pages on data science. So the first question that you might want to ask yourself is, do you have any peers to work with when you're learning the language, either R or Python, or are you working alone? So the reason why to ask this question is it will help you to quickly decide whether you should go with R or Python. So the best way to learn is if you have a mentor or a peer who, who has a good working knowledge of the language, which you could consult if you encounter any problems. So personally, when I first started out programming, I chose Python. And the reason being because we had other peers who are already using Python. And so whenever I would encounter problems, then I could consult with that person. And then later on, there are additional members who join our research group who uses R programming language. And so in order to work more efficiently, then the natural step would be to also look into the R programming language as well and see what are its capabilities in terms of the packages that are involved for the research project. So if you're working alone, not as a team, but working alone, then this question wouldn't be relevant to you. So any language would then be a possible choice either R or Python. So this leads us to the second point. And the second point being that the reason why we're learning the programming language is not for the joy of learning the language itself, but to learn the language so that we can apply it to pre-process the data, perform statistical analysis, aggregate data, construct machine learning models, and also to deploy the model to production. And so this naturally leads to what packages, libraries, modules, that are included in R and Python. For example, to do machine learning in R, you would use Carrot package. In Python, you would use the scikit-learn. To handle data frame in R, you would use dplyr, while in Python, you would use pandas. To create dashboard, you would use dash for both R or Python, but you can use shiny for R. So aside from this, it also depends on the domain or the field that you are in. For example, in biology or in chemistry, where there are libraries and packages that are available only for R or only for Python. So for example, in chem informatics, there is a package called the RD kit, which is available only for Python. And so if you want to use the RD kit functionality, then you would also have to use Python. On the other hand, there are packages that are available only for R, such as the bio 3D. And if if you would like to use that package, then you have to use R. And the reason for using these packages is because they really save you time. Instead of you having to create or write custom function to perform the same task, you could easily do it by using the functions available from the library or the package. So in terms of the versatility, Python is much more flexible in which you can build machine learning models, deploy it to the web in a much more robust way using web framework like Django and Flask. And you can also deploy it as a desktop application using Kiwi or PyQt. But for R, you're pretty much limited to creating statistical analysis or creating machine learning models and also to build a simple dashboard. And so does this mean that R is quite limited in its versatility and therefore you should not look into this language. And so what R lacks in versatility, in my opinion, is made up by its beautiful plots and visualization. Particularly the ggplot2 package produces some amazing plots and graphs. Particularly the default color palette of the ggplot2 looks really amazing. 
ggplot2 is the acronym for gg which is the grammar of graphics so the essence of ggplot2 is that you could create graphs layer by layer so you could essentially create a simple plot and then you could add new layers to it one by one and so you could customize this until you are satisfied with the final outcome and the popular plot package that you would use for python would be matplotlib and seaborn also produces some really nice graphs as well so if you're using python and you would like to produce similar plots like those generated from ggplot2 then you could look into the package called plot9 Okay, so in terms of the popularity, I'm sure that Python has a larger user base. So which means that much more users are using Python. And so R has a smaller community of users. And the reason being that Python is a bit easier to learn and the syntax looks much more appealing. As opposed to R, the syntax looks a bit awkward in some parts and the language is a bit difficult to learn. So personally, my first impression of R was the language looks a bit a bit awkward a bit less intuitive and and once i've learned python and had a better grasp of the programming language then the transition to r was a lot easier so as you can see there are pros and cons of r and python where the pros of python seem to be more than r so it really depends on your niche your field of study and also your own personal preference so personally in our research group we use both r and python to carry out many of the machine learning tasks but with a little bias toward R programming language. And the major reason can be attributed to my own personal preference of liking how the plots look like in ggplot2 and the ability to easily deploy a data-driven web application in R using the Shiny framework. So I'm sure you could do the same thing using Dash in Python. But so far, Shiny is working really nice for me and I could easily deploy a web application, which means that the machine learning model generated in R could then be deployed and used by the general public by means of the interactive data-driven web application deployed in the R language using Shiny as I've shown you in the last couple of videos. And in terms of the job market, Python seemed to be the more popular language. So based on scanning job advertisement on LinkedIn, I noticed that there are much more frequency of finding Python rather than R in the languages that the employers are looking for. But at the end of the day, if you can use R or if you could use Python to build machine learning models, to deploy the models, to perform the necessary statistical analysis, machine learning analysis, and that you have the mindset to learn the other language, meaning that if you're already using R, if you have the mindset of perhaps learning Python, or if you are already in Python, then if you have the open mindset of also learning R. So this brings us to the next point, which is can R and Python coexist? And the answer is yes. So there are three ways that you can integrate R and Python together, which is to embed Python code inside R code using reticulate package or embed R code into Python code using the RPy2 package. And the third route would be to use Jupyter Notebook to have the cell which are running on R code and which are running on Python code. But if you're doing the third option, then there must be a way that will serve as an intermediate between R and Python, and which is possible if you use the Feather package. So the Feather package will allow you to save the data frame from R into a feather.feather .feather format, which can be read in Python. And the Python could also write a data frame as a feather format, and then the R code can then read the feather format. And so there is interoperability between R and Python by using feather as the intermediate. And in terms of the community support, where if you get stuck, in solving problems in your data science project. Rest assured that there are big community on Stack Overflow where you can either search for existing questions that have been answered by the community, or you could also post new questions so that the community can help to answer you. So there are big community for both R and Python. So rest assured that your queries, questions would be answered. So are you still having doubt or uncertainty which language to go with, R or Python? 
Python. So if you have no compelling reason to select either R or Python, then follow along the tutorial of this YouTube channel. So we're going to cover both R and Python, where initially there are predominantly R tutorials, but later on we will also include Python tutorials as well. And so I'm aiming to create a growing library of tutorials for performing various data science tasks in R and Python. So if you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, please do so. So more videos will be added on a weekly basis. And so just follow along and make sure that you also publish your progress onto the GitHub, which will serve as your data science portfolio. So if you haven't yet watched the video that I released a couple of weeks ago about how you can build your data science portfolio, please find the link in the description down below. And if you haven't yet seen the video about the learning strategies for data science 2020, please also refer to that video as well. And the links are also in the description. And so as the old saying goes, don't judge a book by its cover. You should try the language yourself and then make a decision whether you want to use R or Python. So maybe spend a week using R, a week using Python, looking at the various packages that are available for data science task, follow some tutorials in R or Python, and then finally make a decision. Which one do you think is suitable for you? Which one is right for you? Finding the perfect fit that fits with your own personal preference, and then you use that language. So personally, as I have mentioned already, we use both R and Python with a bit bias toward R because of the Shiny and the ggplot2 package. But don't take my word for it. Try it out and make your own decision which language is suitable for you. And so let me know down below in the comments which language are you using? Which one do you like and why? I would like to hear your comments. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you in the next one. But in the meantime, please check out these videos.